contenders. A sector has collapsed. That's the best we've got. Got you. Just a second. Someone's down. The supply crate event is about to start. Yo, what is up boys and welcome back to yet another video. This one is going to be talking about a brand new battle royale game made by Ubisoft Montreal, creators of games such as Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six series and Watch Dogs. And I know what you're thinking, oh no, not another battle royale game. Well, there is quite a lot of things which makes this game unique compared to other battle royale games out there. It does quite a lot of things which I'd consider are kind of risky. So that's what this video is going to be all about. It's going to tell you pretty much everything for us to know about this game and what makes it stand out and hopefully by the end of the video you should be able to tell whether it's something you're interested in downloading or not because of course this is as no surprise a free to play battle royale game which is funded primarily through things like battle passes and cosmetics along with telling you guys what's unique about this game i will also be sharing with you my first ever win which was a pretty high kill win it was very very messy i only got three hours or so to play this game unfortunately but hopefully it should be decent gameplay for day one so let's start off with basics of the game when you first spawn in you're going to spawn on one of four corners of this map this might not seem like a big change but it is nevertheless a change you don't have some kind of plane flying over the map you'll see right here there's like a social hub and there's one of these like i said on each of the four corners of the map at that point you will eventually be deployed from a pod and you will have to work out where you want to fly to there's quite a lot of leeway on where you can control your pod. So it's not like you're highly limited by which corner of the map you end up spawning in, but slightly. This was actually my first ever life, so you can see I was flying like an idiot anyway. And this is where things get weirder. Like I said, there's a lot of things which make this game unique, and you might have seen one of them while flying in. Although the map is a square shape, and of course it is much like a, other Battle Royale games where the zone is going to close in, this game does not have a traditional circle zone. Instead, it has segments of a map which are closed off, and instead of simply hurting the player, players will fall through the buildings because this is some kind of futuristic battle royale simulation, the city being called Neo Arcadia, for 100 players in case you're wondering, so 30 squads are free right now, but maybe we'll change to duos and quads and that kind of stuff in, in the future, probably will do in some, in some shape, way or form. So you'll see a zone decaying in the background right now. So the main things to take away from this is the circle is a lot more random than our battle royales because it is not a circle. It can literally, as you kind of seen for a glimpse right there on the map, it can be very much so a tunnel that you are going to be funneled through. And you'll see right there, that's what I'm talking about. We're falling through the buildings. The buildings will eventually disappear into a void and you will fall through them, meaning you can run straight through them into the zone. And another thing to take away is depending on how many players are in your lobby, if you are in in a low population area the game might start with several zones already missing and i know in some of this gameplay my aim's really really dog shit again we only had three hours i couldn't play the game full screen i wish it wasn't dog shit but uh yeah maybe next time i will be streaming this game as soon as this video goes up as well the way the game is going to be working is video of twitch shops i think for the people who participate in this beta test so if you do want to get beta access we need to watch twitch stream so if you want to come in my chat and fall asleep feel free to do so Anyway, we're still really just scraping the surface with these features. I know I'm going through them pretty slowly, but I'm trying to get a, a decent amount of detail on all of them. So, the game isn't technically Battle... I mean, it is Battle Royale, but it's not actually called Battle Royale. It's called Crown Rush, and the way Crown Rush works is at the end zone, there will be a crown which spawns, as you can see right here. We lost. On my win, this doesn't happen, but uh, this is fine. But yeah, so a crown will spawn in the end zone, and there's two ways that a game can be won. It can be either won through all other teams dying, and obviously you being the last team, or someone can simply possess the crown for 45 seconds. As you would have noticed a second ago, when people do have the crown, they are completely visible to everyone else, meaning you are obviously subject to getting shot a bit. At that point, if they do die, then another player can pick up a crown and the timer will be reset. And this makes the end zones absolute chaos. Along with this feature, you would have noticed another one which adds to the chaos throughout the entire game, but also the end of the game, you would have noticed it earlier, is the revive system. Of course, what would a battle royale game be these days without a reviving system? 
But as I've said before, this game is unique. It does things very, very different. Instead of having a area which you can revive your teammates from or having bounties or something like that, like in Modern Warfare, you revive your teammates from other people's dead bodies. So say for example, you just killed a squad of three, but one of your boys died. Well, that person who died in your squad will enter ghost mode. They will then be able to go around and ping enemy players, obviously being a very, very powerful tool. If you do die, you still can participate and help your teammates but you're going to be as a ghost and then that ghost needs to go to one of the player's dead bodies that you just killed and then they can press f on a body and then you will be able to revive them so it does incentivize actively moving towards areas which people have just murdered each other in so that way you can get your teammates back up but maybe you can see what I mean now about saying that this game makes a lot of risky moves. You can see kind of it's starting to all come together to be something which is a bit of a unique package. And again, we really haven't scratched the surface with a lot of the features. But don't worry, I've written all of the things which makes this game unique down. So we've still got a bunch of stuff to talk about. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? So another thing you would have noticed throughout this gameplay as well is the doors. Not that they're that unique, but basically they spawn like that. And then you destroy them. Cool. It's a door. Who really cares? But another thing you would have noticed is the fusing of weapons, or maybe you didn't. So you'll see at the bottom of the screen, you've got two different hacks, which we're going to talk about in a bit more detail soon, and you've also got two different weapons. You'll see the bar to the right of those weapons is the level at which that weapon is fused. So you can see in this case, my armor is, well, I've just picked up a level two armor. My uh, ESP hack is level zero, and then my machine gun is level one, or level two, I guess, technically, and my Komodo is level one. So Depending on the hack and depending on the weapon, this can do a different thing. For the majority of weapons, it's going to simply increase the magazine size. You would have seen right here, my machine gun increased from 150 to 180 magazine size. The sniper rifle, however, doesn't get a bigger magazine and instead just becomes a stronger weapon. It does more damage in that case. And you would have seen, I just picked up a level 2 hack my e hack which enables a lower cooldown for that which doesn't sound too incredible but once you get the maxed out uh, hacks it can be very very strong especially in the end zone with a crown you can just spam your hacks over and over again and just completely destroy people purely through juking them so if you've got two high level hacks especially the good ones it is insanely strong it's i really can't express how, how good it is to be honest it's, it's very very good you would have noticed as well, I've got right now an armor hack, which is why I sprayed an entire magazine into that guy earlier and it did nothing because it's kind of maybe overpowered. Literally, it lasts like 10 seconds and when you've got the armor hack on, you cannot take any damage, but you also can't use a weapon. So, kind of interesting. So once you fuse these hacks or these weapons together, you'll see right here, I'm fusing my armor to level four. It will turn yellow. And in the case of weapons, they will have a cool animation and they will cosmetically, I believe at least, some of these details might be wrong, but for the most part, I should be right. Um, it will fuse together and will make a max level weapon, which looks different. So that's pretty cool. And it does mean that something which makes a lot of battle royales kind of complicated and a bit messy, Attachments is not a thing in this game. I missed that shot. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. Attachments aren't in this game. So instead of attachments, they decided to go for the complications of having the relatively... I missed that one as well. Oh my god, I'm so bad. The relatively simple process of having your hacks and your weapons level up through picking them up. So it's kind of more casual through this way and makes it more simple to pick up, I guess. But it does mean you're not going to have anywhere near the high level of meta that you would have through something like attachments. So it's good and bad. Speaking of good and bad, another thing which is a bit weird in this game is there's not any armor system or anything like that. This isn't Modern Warfare, it's not Apex Legends, but you do have a big old health bar. You have 150 health and your health is in fact regenerating. Hmm. Not only is regenerating HP in a battle royale something which I can't personally think of really seeing before, I might be wrong on this. On top of that, you also have no consumables, so you can't use something to increase your health. You simply have to either cast a hack, which will increase the regen of your HP, or just wait a bunch of time to regen your HP. This again is kind of a good and bad thing, where it will mean that you can end up in situations you just wouldn't end up in battle royales. Sometimes you'll be like the last one live, you'll have one HP, and you just have there's nothing you can do in this case. So it kind of balances out cases like that a bit more, but it also means that for the opposing side, 
there's not really that much of an advantage you can have coming into combat because most of the time people are going to be max HP, they're going to have their hacks off cooldown, they're going to be kind of meaty. The gameplay is like extremely fast paced, but at the same time it feels like the weapons like do no damage. It's very peculiar, uh, you'd have to play it to, to really see it, you can probably see it throughout this gameplay though. I'd consider myself someone who can aim and is decent at FPS's, but this game everyone's just flying around at a million miles an hour. I really don't know how I feel about all of it, like is it good, is it bad? I don't really know, but it's definitely something. So yeah, there's no consumables. There is events which happen in the map, such as a double jump event, and also I think a health consumable event is the one that I've seen, which relates to this one I'm talking about right now. So you can pick those up if that event does happen, which it isn't going to happen every single game. But uh, yeah, there's, there's no way to regen your health other than the health hack. Obviously your health regenerating relatively slowly, or... I guess also the event. Speaking of events, this game has something else which might upset people. I don't know. It has Twitch integration, okay? I don't know how it works because obviously these were closed tests. We didn't have Twitch streams to, to, to play on at the time because we weren't allowed to stream it or only allowed to record it in case it wasn't already obvious. So the way I believe it works is the Twitch integration is a Twitch extension called Crowncast and viewers of a game will be able to obviously do interesting things in the game. I don't know everything that you, they can do in the game because Ubisoft didn't really talk about that to be honest. I guess we'll have to see when the game's out. In fact right now the game is out so I guess we'll, we'll see right now. Um, but we did mention things such as low gravity being something that viewers can obviously change. It's not going to be some stupid or at least they say but we'll see. It's not going to be something that could make a streamer's experience easy. It should hopefully be things that will affect the entire game. And there's no way that they are going to make it so that it is an advantage. Because obviously you can imagine the outrage. In case you wonder what the hell would even be an advantage. I guess, you know, maybe they could make it so like weapons would spawn on you or something. Or near you. Or maybe there's an airdrop that would spawn. But you'd have the upper hand because you know your chat's going to get it. Things like that would be an advantage. Albeit a small advantage, it would still be an advantage. So those are things they are probably not going to add. Just to confirm, those are things that are not in, probably. Also, I still can't aim. I don't know, you'd have to play it yourself, man. Maybe maybe I'm just shit and old age is getting to me, but I swear, like, with the fast movement, it's just really hard to aim in this game. The guns just don't feel quite right, to be honest. In case it wasn't already obvious, this isn't an ad. I can obviously say whatever I want about the game. I did enjoy it, and I'm excited to see how it is on launch. And I'm sure it will take some of the, you know, feedback in uh, into their future decisions with the game. But, uh, yeah, there's definitely some things which do need to get changed. So this is all subject to change. Some things which I'm talking about right now might not even be in the game when you first play it. Anyway, this is the good game, or not really the good game, but the game where I die slightly less in the background right now. So I'm just gonna leave this one unedited and you guys can watch this. And to be honest, the reason I'm doing this is not only because I think it's interesting to hear all of the things which makes this game unique, but it's also because I forgot to record my um my teammate's audio. So didn't really have too much choice, and I don't know what this person was doing. I think they like fell asleep or something, maybe. So that's unfortunate. At this point, we probably should have covered pretty much everything which makes this game unique. One thing I did forget to mention from my list of things which makes this game unique is... I've said unique so many times this video. Is you will find chests around the map outside. Mostly indoors, you're going to find, you know, just a bunch of weapons, a bunch of ammo, and all that kind of stuff. But outside, you can find chests. And sometimes, from what I can see, these chests can spawn fully decked out uh, hacks or fully decked out weapons. Just to give you guys a bit of a better idea of what kind of weaponry and what kind of hacks you can expect in the game. Just to name some of the hacks quickly, we've got Teleport, we've got Reveal, which does, you know, an ESP kind of thing. You've got the Armor, you've got Ball, which turns you into a Bouncy Ball. You've got the Wall, which you would have seen earlier, creates a big wall. You've got a Mine Hack, which will deploy a mine, which kind of homes onto people. There's a decent few hacks in the game, but there isn't a, an astounding amount. And the same can be said with the Weaponry 2, which you're going to look at... Uh, an assault rifle, which you can see I've got in my one slot right now, a pump action shotgun, which I've got in my two slot right now. You've got a aimbot pistol, you've got a wingman or whatever it's called from Apex kind of thing. You've got grenade launchers, you've got like plasma grenade launchers. There's around about, I think, nine weapons in the game. My favorite one personally, although it felt shit sometimes, but it also felt amazing sometimes, is probably the minigun. So that one was good fun. The issue with the way the game's set up, but I guess we'll see if it is a, an issue in the future. But the game obviously needs you to put weapons together to increase the level of that weapon, so that way you can fuse it. But also, if they add new weapons or add new hacks in the game, that does mean that there is going to be a smaller loot table 
all the... Is this my winning game? I think this... I don't know. We'll see in a second. I'm pretty sure it is. But yeah, this is Ghost Mode right here. But you would have seen it earlier. But yeah, if you add more weaponry into the game, like let's say right now it's like nine weapons or so. If you add another five, then obviously fusing weapons is going to be significantly harder. And the same applies to the hacks as well. So I guess we'll see how that one ends up working out. Yes, we did respawn quite a lot in this game. So respawning is pretty good. It's pretty fast. And also, obviously, you can yoink the players of dead enemies, which were not killed by you. So you could just, once you die, run away like a pussy and go find some dead bodies to steal. It works. And we've done it. I'll show you guys this a bit later just before we wrap up this video. But there is also a social hub that you will get into before you join the game. So if you are in a uh, lobby or you get invited to a lobby by your friend, then you will join this small social hub. Oh my god, the aim's so bad again. I can't believe I'm doing this. Uh, there will be a small social hub which you'll be able to join and uh, see your friends and do emotes and change your loading screen, change your weapon skins, all this kind of stuff which you will mostly get through a battle pass before the game. It's kind of cool to have this instead of just sitting in like, you know, a lobby and see your characters all just standing there. It's cool to just be able to walk around and, and look at each other and uh, you can see things like news, any updates that I've got on the game and uh, other things in there. So basically this is pretty much like your, your main menu where you're going to be spending most of your time there where you're going to choose what games you want to play and, and change everything you want about your characters. You will have probably noticed as well at this point that there is actually several heroes in this game or several characters. These are purely cosmetic. In fact, I would... Oh my god. I wouldn't have blamed you if you didn't notice that already. But yeah, I think there's eight or nine different characters which have got different accents. Obviously, obviously they're just different characters from different backgrounds. But it is purely a lore thing. This was a bit surprising to me and it's not like uh, the females have a smaller hitbox or anything like that. So these guys are purely cosmetic, as I just said. So it's not like certain hacks or certain weapons are going to be limited to certain characters in the game. Which again, is good and bad. The game does definitely remind me, I guess, I'm sure you guys can agree with this one, mostly of a little battle royale game called Apex. Mostly because of the, uh, the futuristic theming, the fact that when you shoot someone, the health comes off of them. As soon as you hit them, you'll see it right there. There we go, I just got a hit marker right there, sensational. Um, and a bunch of other things. Like, you can slide as well. You know, you're not allowed to slide in the game. If you slide in the game, it's not just Apex Legends, okay? This game's Apex. Kind of. Yeah, I tried to hit a fat no-scope here, but it didn't end up... Oh, no, it did happen. Wait, I think I got hit there. I don't know. I'm kind of confused. Familiar weapons are really bad, by the way. But this is also something you can customize in the game. Oh, my God. What is happening here? Where's my second weapon? Get a second weapon, Lewis. Do some damage or something, man. This is embarrassing. Those were two easy kills. You just messed it up. One thing that I'm a bit... What the hell is that guy doing? One thing that I'm a bit skeptical... Oh, I was reviving his team, I see. One thing I'm a bit skeptical of in this game is the lack of really feeling like you can do a 1v3 in this game or a 1v4, 1v2. You probably could. But yeah, some Battle Royale games are set up in this way which make players uh, relatively tanky and it does make it so really team play is necessary. Which is unfortunate. It would be cool if, you know, you could be really, really good at this game and outgame people. I guess once maybe a meta is established, we will see if maybe 1v3, 1v4 on people is a bit easier. If you do get a shotgun and shoot them from point blank, if you're literally kissing them, it will do a lot of damage. But as a whole, um, I would have maybe preferred to see uh, more of a possibility of that one. This game is definitely less so about aim. <laughs> as you can see and more so about using your hacks and being in the right place at the right time because aiming in this game is hard okay as i'm still going with that one you will see in the top right as well icons which might be confused by no in fact confusing though don't worry the first one on the left is uh the amount of groups that are left not the amount of players which is what we thought at some point but that is indeed the groups not the players uh, the next one is of course the kills the next one is I guess assists. I don't really know. And the next one, I actually don't know what I don't know what that is. Revives? I think it's revives. Yeah, pretty epic. So we're moving into the final zone here, and you will see a ball flying around. That's obviously the the ball move. It's it's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, if you want to be a bouncing ball, if you want to be Ham Hammond from Overwatch, but not an Overwatch, well, come on down to Hyperscape. There isn't really, I'd say, a hot spot in these games. To be honest, it's not like PUBG or something where you're going to be landing at school or Tilted Towers from Fortnite or something like that. There is a decent amount of interesting POIs, like um, big like churches and that building right there. It's like a big arena. But for the most part, it does seem like, unfortunately, in my opinion, but it's kind of to be expected when the combat's this fast. Most of the combat is going to occur outside and you are going to be uh, on the move. 
And the cool thing about this game is once the combat does start, it really doesn't stop. You're going to have a few minutes of grinding, and after that, you're going to be straight into just constant action in this game. Because enemy footsteps are so loud, weapon shots can be heard from a decent distance, and all that kind of stuff, it does mean that you will pretty much, as soon as you start engaging one team, have an R10 team jumping on top of you. Again, this could change in the future if a meta is established. Right now, that's pretty much how it works. This win was incredibly messy, but it was our highest kill win by far. Like, oh, oh no, oh no. I was having an issue with this game with not being able to run it full screen. Oh my, ugh, jeez Louise. Yeah, I couldn't run it full screen because of my stream PC. I did realize I could just like stop uh, capturing my screen with my capture card and then I can play the game full screen. But obviously with games like this, they do feel and run a lot better full screen than they do windowed. So that's going to be my excuse along with it being my first time playing. I think this was like our third or fourth game of the day. So uh, yeah, I'm just trying to make a plethora of excuses so you guys think uh, more of me. You guys know I'm, I can aim, right? Yeah, it's it was just those excuses that I just listened right there. All, all completely valid ones. You will see right there on the edge of the map a plethora of respawn since obviously a bunch of people died there. I did end up going inside the building to try to find a respawn. You can literally open up a map and see all the respawns. Only the dead people can see the respawns though, or at least on the map. So you do really need to communicate with your teammates through VoIP and tell them where to go. And you can see right there I'm pinging an enemy saying, watch out, there's an enemy there. But luckily, he didn't see us. So while the world is deteriorating, you go ahead and get that ninja respawn because power in numbers. Overall thoughts on the game, though, I'd probably give it like a solid 7.5, 8, 7 out of 10, something like that. It really just depends on how much Ubisoft support it, and it depends on what they change, if it's something that I do like or dislike. I don't really know exactly what I'd want them to change, to be honest, at this point. Um, but hopefully, with some feedback, they can make this game pretty cool. I think it's always good to have more competition. Like I said, it's Ubisoft's first delve into the Battle Royale genre, and it's Ubisoft Montreal, which obviously, like I said before, are you know, pretty well known for being a decent development studio. So hopefully they can go ahead and um, make this just another free-to-play choice for you to play. Competition drives innovation. So although you might like this game, you might not like this game, it is ultimately going to force the other competitors out there, Modern Warfare, Apex Legends, whatever Battle Royale you do enjoy, to try to make the best Battle Royale game that they can. Because otherwise, Hyperscape's going to steal their slice of the pie and steal all of their money with microtransactions. Oh no. What are we ever going to do? So you can see we are now in the final zone. You can see the crown is being worn by an enemy. I was dead, honestly, most of the end zone. You can see so far I've killed six people. It's just it was, wasn't was like epic kills. It was just like really messy, shitty kills where I'm just like, I, I don't deserve this. Um, so I think the guy who was playing with in the little wood right here ended up killing the crown wearer. He was doing so much in the end zone right here. And he ends up getting the, the crown at some point. But uh, yeah, I kind of just get revived over and over again. But that's okay, because 150 HP is a lot of HP. And I mean, you can see that person's getting revived. It's just so messy. But again, I'm going to put this down to like, it's been the first time uh, people are playing. You see, I put down the heal hack right there, so I can instantly get my health regenerating. I'm literally getting bonked on the head by a bunch of people running around with melee weapons. Kind of questionable. Ultimately, we're keeping them busy over here, okay? And that's that's what's important. You know, we're keeping them busy, and, and they can't as easily uh, get the crown, because they're all running at me and getting really angry with me. We respawned our teammate right there. I don't know who the hell that guy was, but hopefully he appreciates a respawn. You're welcome. Okay, for getting carried through this first epic victory royale. This game actually ended up being really, really close though. The crown wearer system, I don't really know how I feel about it. I do always respect if the developer tries to do something different, and that's why I'm maybe not being harsh on this game when I do really get annoyed by some of the weapons, to be honest, right now, because I think maybe they can make it in a way which is just nicer um but yeah the fact that the crown wearer system is there like i don't know i heard a story of someone apparently picking up a crown and running out of his own and just outrunning everyone but it just the end zone ends up being uh, a crown wearer spamming abilities over and over again like there's an ability where you can fly up into the air and there's an ability obviously where which i mentioned before where you can heal you can go invisible there's a bunch of really really strong abilities which if you've got them maxed out you're literally just going to spam them in the end zone you're going to kite people you can see right now uh some good aim but on top of that you're also going to see in the little wood literally just kiting the people he's just running around the buildings and they're trying to chase them and i'm just trying to keep them distracted it's just incredibly hard to deal with that especially if let's say you're one person there's no way in hell assuming they've got decent hacks you're going to be able to take down three people there if they've got like heals you're just not going to be able to do enough damage because of the way the weapons are uh, unless you're like one pumping everyone not one pumping but like two pumping everyone so that's how that game ended up uh ending 
we ended up, yeah, I was right before, but the restores. Getting in total, as you can see right here, 17 kills, which I think is decent. Quite a lot of assists and some restores. Not my finest game ever, but it was a fun game nonetheless. An epic victory royale, a world record right there, 20 kills. Try to beat it, guys, you won't be able to. Oh, wait, how many kills? It wasn't 20, it was 18, right? I don't know how many kills it was, I just said. And I'm not going to go back and find out what I said, because... That's too much effort. So there's a few more things I want to talk about before wrapping up this video. You can see this is the social hub I was talking about right here. So once you've finished the game, you can either queue immediately back into a game or you can go over here and change your cosmetics, look at the news and updates and all that kind of stuff. So this is a cool area to show off to your friends if you've got an epic emote, an epic uh, set of clothes or whatever else. The only final things really to talk about is we are definitely thinking a lot about Twitch streamers with the launch of this game. Not only are they looking at, obviously, the implementation of this extension, which I guess we'll see how that one works out, but they are also adding, or in fact, there already is a feature on launch which prevents stream snipers, or at least kind of stops it, which makes the queue time more random. So if someone's trying to press, like, boom, queue, as soon as you do, but you've got the stream sniper feature on, then in theory, it should kind of randomize it a bit more, assuming the player, the game has enough population of people queuing in, and it will make it so very easier to dodge. Along with that, you've got things like name masking, as you would have seen in Upper Battle Royales 2. There is a tutorial as soon as you launch the game showing you all of the hacks, all of the weapons, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's about it for the game. Hopefully you learned pretty much everything there is to know about this game. I don't think I missed a single thing. I was laying awake at night time, anxiously awaiting the, the release of this game, and I did literally jot down everything that I could think which made this game different to our Battle Royales out there. I think that's the most important thing to really think about. Maybe you like the theme, maybe you don't, but I think if a game like this is trying to do several different things which makes it unique, then it is important to know that. So yeah, hopefully you learn everything that there is to know. Anyway, if you guys want to check out my stream, again, I'll leave a link to that in the top of the description. I will be live playing the game for I don't really know how long. I guess it depends on uh, how things go and if I'm having a good time or not. I think I'm going to be playing with Sada. So hopefully I'll play with Sada and it will be his first time playing. So that should be fun. So we can all laugh at Sada and how bad he is or how epic he is. We, we don't know. Maybe this is his game. He just played a lot of Overwatch. Yeah, maybe Sada's epic at this game. Maybe. They're not going to be laughing at Sada. They're going to be laughing at me and my terrible way. Like, holy shit, it was, it was a disaster in this video. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, but the game's release window is summer 2020. It's currently on PC only, but they do plan on adding it to Xbox One and PS4, I'm assuming with um, cross-platform. And there will be some other game modes coming out in the future, in case you're wondering. Forgot all that stuff. Whoops. Yeah, we'll see. Will this game die? Will it live? I don't know. I guess we'll see with time. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Anyway, have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.